In the 1990s, retired KGB officer Vasily Matrokin, helped by the British M-16, smuggled 25,000 pages of highly confidential KGB documents out of Moscow. They represent a minuscule part of the KGB archive, estimated to be some 27 billion pages. The East German Stasi archive had 3 billion. Nevertheless, the FBI described the Matrokin archives as the most complete and extensive intelligence ever received from any source. According to this archive, the first American book on the assassination of JFK, entitled Oswald, Assassin or Fall Guy, which blames the CIA and the FBI for the crime, was masterminded by the KGB. The book's author, Joachim Jostein, a German-born American communist, spent five days in Dallas after the assassination, then went to Europe and disappeared from sight. A few months later, Jostein's book was published by American communist Carlo Aldo Marzani, New York, who received $80,000 from the KGB to produce pro-Soviet books plus an annual $10,000 to advertise them aggressively. Other documents in the Matrokin archive identify the first American reviewer of this book, Victor Perlow, as an undercover KGB operative. Jostein's book was dedicated to American Mark Lane, described in the Matrokin archive as a leftist who anonymously received money from the KGB. In 1966, Lane published the bestseller Rush to Judgment, alleging that Kennedy was killed by a right-wing American group. These two books encouraged people with any remotely related background expertise to join the fray. Each viewed elements from his own perspective, but all accused elements in the U.S. of that crime. New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison looked around his home district and in 1967 arrested a local man whom he accused of conspiring with elements of U.S. intelligence to murder Kennedy in order to stop the latter's effort to end the Cold War. The accused was acquitted in 1969, but Garrison clung to his story, first writing A Heritage of Stone, Putnam, 1970, and eventually published On the Trail of the Assassins, Sheridian Square, 1988, one of the books that inspired Oliver Stone's movie JFK. The Kennedy assassination conspiracy was born and it never died. According to another document, in April 1977, KGB chairman Yuri Andropov informed the Politburo that the KGB was launching a new disinformation campaign to further implicate American special services in the Kennedy assassination. Those were the words of a, of a KGB, of a Soviet defector from Romania by the name of Pasepa, P-A-C-E-P-A, -E and he's being interviewed by uh, Front Page Magazine which asked the following question. You have discovered documents personally written by the assassin Lee Harvey Oswald suggesting that he was linked to the KGB's Department for Assassination Abroad and that he had returned to the U.S. from the Soviet Union only temporarily on a mission. Two federal investigations and over 2,500 books have looked into the assassination, but no one has raised this matter. How come? Let me ask that question again. Front Page Magazine asked this uh, defector, an uh, intelligence officer of Romania, you have discovered documents personally written by the assassin suggesting that he was linked to the KGB's Department for Assassination Abroad and that he had returned to the U.S. from the Soviet Union only temporarily on a mission. Two federal investigations and over 2,500 books 
have looked into the assassination, but no one has raised this matter. How come? And Pasepa says, because no assassination investigators or researchers were sufficiently familiar with KGB operational codes and practices. The FBI recently told the U.S. Congress that only a native Arabic speaker could catch the fine points of an Al-Qaeda telephone intercept, especially one containing intelligence double talk. I spent 23 years of my other life speaking in such codes. Even my own identity was codified. In 1955, when I became a foreign intelligence officer, I was informed that from then on my name would be Mahai Podenu, and Podenu I remained until 1978 when I broke with communism. All of my subordinates and the rest of the Soviet bloc foreign intelligence officers used codes in their written reports when talking with their sources and even in conversations with their own colleagues. When I left Romania for good, my espionage service was the university. The country's leader was the architect. Vienna was Videle, and so on. In an interview published in the U.S., KGB General Boris Solomitin, a longtime deputy chief of the PGU, which is the Soviet Foreign Intelligence, once stated, quote, I don't make out of myself a man who knows everything in intelligence as some former officers of the first department who have written their books try to do. In intelligence and counterintelligence, only the man who is heading these services knows everything. I am saying this because all the questions concerning ciphers and cipher machines were under another department in a directorate outside of mine, similar to your National Security Agency. During my last 10 years in Romania, I also managed the country's equivalent of NSA and became familiar with the code system used throughout the Soviet bloc intelligence community. This knowledge allowed me to realize that the innocuous sounding letters from Oswald and his Soviet wife to the Soviet embassy in Washington, D.C., which were made available by uh, to the Warren Commission, constituted veiled messages to the KGB. In them, I found proof that Oswald was sent to the U.S. on a temporary mission and that he planned to return to the inscrutable Soviet Union after accomplishing his task. It took me some years to shift the wheat from the, from the chaff in going through the piles of investigative reports generated by the violent death of the young American president. But when I finished, I was fascinated by the wealth of KGB fingerprints all over the story of Oswald and his killer, Jack Ruby. In front page magazine ask, so give us some concrete KGB fingerprints. Pasepa says, let's take the handwritten note in Russian Oswald left his Soviet wife Marina just before he tried to kill American General Edwin Walker in a dry run before going on to assassinate President Kennedy. That was very, that was, that very, that very important note contains two KGB codes. Friends, code for support officer, and Red Cross, code for financial help. In this note, Oswald tells Marina what to do in case he is arrested. He stresses that she should contact the Soviet Embassy, that they have friends here and that the Red Cross will help her financially. Particularly significant is Os Oswald's instruction for her to send the embassy the information about what happened to me. At that time, the code for embassy was office, but it seems that Oswald wanted to be sure Marina would understand that she should immediately inform the Soviet embassy. It is noteworthy that Marina did not mention this note to the U.S. authorities after Oswald's arrest.